Good morning, everyone. And in today's episode of Fixing Random Things That Are Broken on the Farm, we have another tile hole. I swear that someone's sneaking into all of our farms in the middle of the night and breaking our tiles. Must be the neighbors. I like to separate problems into two different but very distinct categories. First are the problems that just inconvenience you. They don't really do anything more than make you angry and slow you down. And the second type of problem, which is what we seem to always run into, are the problems that actually stop you from being able to complete your job. And this is one of them right here. What we have on our hands here is a classic case of a plug tile. Why is it plugged? That's a great question. Spite, maybe? Most likely dirt, though. These old clay tiles, nothing but headaches at this point. You may recall we fixed one right before planting season, about 250 to 300 yards to the north, and it was basically the same deal. Possibly will be the same length of tile when it's all said and done. Marty's got a safety red on, so I don't bonk him in the head with the backhoe bucket. I let you watch me do some hoeing, but I kind of need both hands for the sticks. Satisfaction guaranteed. When I was out here planting, we thought it was just a little bit moist, so we went around it, thinking we'd get stuck and the beans probably wouldn't come up at all. And it was more than just moist. It was pretty much a flood underground from that tile. You can see all that built up water clearing its way out. When the lines plug through there, the water finds the easiest way out. In this case, the water was pooled up at the last good section of the tile. It was just bubbling up right there, creating a little bit of a swamp. It's finally broken free. And we're trying to find a piece of tile that's clear so the water will start draining. And this is probably 30 foot or so. And we've yet to hit a good piece. If you're struggling to comprehend why this is a problem, let me show you real quick. An area where there isn't a plug tile, dry, beans emerging, no problems. Where the tile is plugged and bubbling out. Wet, to say the least. No beans. Although I did try to plant through here a little bit, got in trouble. Supposedly you're supposed to go around the mud. The problem we may run into is that if we keep exploring to the south and do not find any clay tiles that aren't packed full of mud, we may have to give up on fixing this ourselves and just call it a tile plow and run a new tile from the last good point onto the exit. These old clay tiles, let me tell you, I would say that my kids' kids will be out here someday or hopefully out here someday working on all this tile and they're gonna be like, why in the world is all of this old clay Frankenstein together? By that point, I think even some of our shorter runs of old clay tile will have 40 or 50 patches in them, probably multiple patches in the same place. That's what we're dealing with. Not gonna get much flow through there. Who knows what he's doing? Maybe he finally lost his mind. Head for the interstate looking for a ride. I've put some more thought into my two types of problem, and I also think those two types can be divided into two levels of priority. The first being, oh crap, we need to fix this right now, DEFCON 5, call all the help you can get. The second one being, oh darn, this sucks, but we can fix it later. So with these metrics, I'd rate this as a needs to be fixed, but doesn't need to be fixed right away. Like I said though, at the time, we really didn't know that it was plugged, just thought the area was a little bit damp. Only takes a few good rains though to realize what the problem actually was. We're coming out here. Hopefully we can fix it. Once we fix it, we'll either need to feel cultivate it or find a garden tiller. Come out here and plant it. Won't even amount to more than maybe 0.05 of an acre. For us, that's just a rounding error, but it is a rounding error we have to look at pretty frequently. We may have had a breakthrough. We've gathered a little bit more intel and we realized that there's actually two tiles across here. An old clay, which is what we were working on, and a newer plastic ran underneath it, kind of going that direction. So we pretty much have two tiles across each other. The plastic is more important and it's also deeper. What we're assuming happened here is when they laid that deeper plastic tile, they probably plowed right through this clay and patched it with some plastic and it ended up not holding, full full of dirt, and now we have this problem. The real question is though, if there was a plastic underneath it, why did they even patch that old clay as opposed to just hooking it right into the plastic and avoiding all this headache in the first place. This problem's been developing for a long time at this point because that old plastic was laid 30 years ago over there on the terraces. What is this ancient device? He must not trust himself in the water with his phone. The issue now though is getting a hole big enough in that plastic tile to drain all that excess water so we can patch it. We have our little small sawzall, but you don't really want to submerge that in water. Oh, there goes the other sole of my boots. Oh yeah! Go right through it. We're going down. Circling. Bubbling. Yeah, the water's going down over there. Had to resort to some analog methods. 
so we didn't ruin our sawzall. Look at that go. That's crazy. Look how fast that's straightening. Is that easy? I need to dig another hoe bucket out of there? No. I need the tile out of the pickup. No wonder it drains so quickly. Is that an 18 inch? No. I don't know what it is. <laughs> You want bats? Yeah. The final result is we hooked that old clay tile into that big 18 inch plastic tile, essentially decommissioning that old strip, which was pretty much retired anyways. When it's that full of dirt, you can't make anything useful out of it. It's too damp out here to really fill this in. We're gonna let this drain and probably come back later today, maybe tomorrow, fill the rest of the dirt in. And hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we can replant all this, or I guess it's not replanting, replant it the, plant it the first time and grow a crop out here. Gonna have a little bit of yield loss from compaction. That backhoe sure knows how to pack down on the ground. Not that I help either. It's amazing how such a small area of water leaking can create such a larger area of problems. Due to the hydraulic conductivity of water, much like a paper towel, wet spots will slowly drift to drier areas till it balances out. The problem is, is that even our soybeans we have planted in here that are a little bit drier when we planted them have been in anaerobic or without oxygen for so long because that water pushes out all of the air in the pore space and it stays completely saturated. Roots do not like that, leads to root rot, will eventually kill the crop if not hurt it tremendously. One of those things you just gotta fix. Now we gotta fix our second problem of the day, assessing our hail damaged beans to see if we need to replant them. It's been almost a week since they got injured and it's dry enough that we could replant them today if we had the opportunity. We measured off 17 and a half feet. Took a little scan count here on two 15 inch rows next to each other. And we came up with 80,000 plants and that's being generous. Economical stand is 100,000 give or take, which means we should probably go get the planter. Just have a lot of these little guys here that just got shredded and not gonna make it. Hello, old friend. It's been a while. See how she's doing on blood? Perfect. Here goes the four wheel drive that was blocking me in. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. We've already got enough bad stuff going on. Let's not hit the exact emerge planner. Cleared it. I gotta get out the door. Hey, on the bright side, we don't have to use the field cultivators. This is a no-tell operation. Now we just need to secure some replant beans. Fortunately, you get free replant most of the time. Time to get some seed. Add the good old Nutrient Act solutions in yoga. Get some replant as grow beans. Got a little bulk storage here. Another treater in there. But check this thing out. Woo! 9570 RX quad track. That's a nice rig. How quickly do you think they would notice if it went missing? I only borrow it for a day or two. Just want to see how it performs. See if it's worth the money. They're getting a couple extra loose bags that way we don't run out at the end of the field. Just to be safe. The seed warehouse is pretty impressive. Before planting season, they have pro boxes stacked almost to the ceiling. I can't even begin to fathom how many acres they service out of this facility. This also may be one of their seed warehouses for their entire region, I don't know. Nutrient takes care of a lot of farmers, us included. Corn $7 a bushel, beans are $16 a bushel, and my birthday's in three days. That'd be a pretty nice birthday present, even though I never drive the four-wheel drive tractors. That'd look pretty good on a grain cart. Wishful thinking, not gonna happen. Yeah, gas is on, I'll choke a little bit more. Nope. Four weeks of sitting in the barn was all it took for a dead battery. This first farm we're replanting was initially planted with Asgro 38 XF1 Extinflex soybeans. We're coming back in with some 3-5 Extinflex soybeans. It's only the second week of May, but since we planted the first batch of beans so early, we'd be concerned that if we went back in with a 3-8, that they would not mature in the same relative time frame as its earlier planted counterparts. To counteract that and make sure we can get out and harvest them at the same time without any issues, we're putting the 3-5s in. They do have slightly different agronomic traits, 
but both are very adaptable to more moderate farms, which is what this first field is. Either way you look at it though, it's better than not having enough beans because of hail damage. All right, we're ready to plant. It's been a while, hopefully I didn't forget how to run this thing. To the west we go for take number two on this soybean field. There's something that'll brighten your spirits though. Corn looks perfect. A little warm weather, we'll be hitting it with some nitrogen soon. Off to a good start. I've been told that our little region in Illinois here is kind of a garden spot. There's more planted than not planted, which is surprising because it's only the second week of May. Sometimes these people don't get finished up until early June. We're usually a tiny bit ahead of schedule because we're ambitious, maybe a little too aggressive at times, but in years like this, it's worked out well. We get some warm weather. There's gonna be a lot of crops out of the ground here in Paradise Township. I forgot how rough these are on the road. You think that you'd always remember that. We're in the heart of the hail damage area. Cut off corn and beans on both sides of the road. The farm we're going to is right there. We're at the field right now, but we're not going to plant just quite yet. We're actually waiting on our crop insurance adjusters out here to determine whether or not they're going to pay us our stipend or the part of our multi peril crop insurance that protects us from replant costs. Essentially, if there's enough damage of any cause, they will pay you so much money per acre because taking this planter out here and doing all this work is not free, even if you think it is. If you couldn't tell by the fact that I brought the planter over here and it's full of seed, we're replanting it regardless. They can't tell us what we can and cannot do, but they can tell us whether or not they're going to pay us for our actions. There's no doubt we're bringing reinforcements out into this field. In these trying times, these beans could use a little bit of a stimulus. Let's get her backed in nice and cozy with the corner post and get ready to plant this farm the second time this year. Even though we're replanting, we want to make sure it's done right. Inch to an inch and a quarter in the ground. Plenty of moisture. Actually pretty wet, about two inches down. This will be perfect, especially because we have a rain in the forecast. It's not like we had a complete loss out in this field. Our stand count earlier this morning was 80,000 plants per acre. That is 50% of our initial population, which is a pretty drastic hit in terms of overall quantity of plants out in the field. Because we do still have a stand out here though, we're going to try and do our best to stitch as many beans in between the rows and prevent unnecessary damage from tractor and planter traffic. Now in some areas that's unavoidable, so I've actually raised my population here on the ends. I'm planting 120,000 plants per acre. That's not as high as we would originally plant, like I said though, we already have beans out of here. Out in the field, I'm gonna shave 20,000 more off of that and plant 100,000 even. That should put us at a very good quantity of beans. Honestly, we probably will have too many at the end of the day. We'd rather have too many than too little though. When we get out into the long rows in the field, we're actually not going to straddle the rows. We're going to plant at an angle. That way we do as little straight line damage as possible. At an angle, we won't be just devastating one specific area will come across it and hopefully those plants can adapt and go into that. I just wrapped up the end rows. We're going to start planting the long rows in the field at an angle. Gonna drop the population to 100,000 plants per acre and hope for the best. I will say that planting the end rows the second time is much different than the first time. I was kind of all over the place. Combine guy's probably gonna think I've been drinking all morning before I started. Just to remind you all, this is what we're dealing with out here. We have all sorts of plants completely shredded. This one's chopped off. I don't know if he'll even live. This one's got one leaf that's actually dying. It'll probably die. This one's beat up. This one's beat up, chopped off, beat up, beat up, chopped off and already dying. There's another chopped off, beat up, beat up. Not in good shape out here. I've seen healthier people in a morgue. They're thin and in very poor shape. Not to be mistaken for me, who's thick and in bad shape as well. One of the biggest conundrums about this process is that some areas in the field are gonna be just fine. Other areas though are going to be hot spots with a lot of damage. It's hard to determine what needs to go where. That's why we're just gonna put a blanket raid on, 100,000, go across the whole farm. We'll be out here all week if we sit here and obsess over the details. We need to get these in the ground and we have more to do tomorrow. Ah, a young, immature tile hole in its natural environment. Waiting to surprise Andy at some point in the next five years and almost give him a concussion when he drives over it. Since we need to plant at an angle and I don't have any lines for that, we'll make a new one. I'm going to use the A plus heading. So I set an A point and then I pick a heading for how far I wanna go. Zero is straight north and south. So what would be 15 degrees? That'd be 195. We'll try that. 195. 
It's an A, accept, center. I guess you don't need to center it. That seems a little bit more aggressive than I wanted. We'll change it. We'll go 187. That's much better. I think that's what we'll go with. Let's destroy and replenish some beans at the same time. Oh, we get a shot of redemption on every single one of these inlets I hit last time. I will not disappoint you. Oh, just kidding, I hit that one. Disregard what I just said. It's a tail as old as time. Andy runs over another inlet. Now that is definitely some deja vu from four or five weeks ago. Pretty sure I had the planter in the same spot after I hit the same inlet. Probably the same direction. For those of you who are curious how the replanting's going, pretty good. By far, replanting an entire field with just a blanket rate of soybeans is so much less stressful than replanting individual spots and having to jump around in the field. This is easy work for me. Here's the original rows running that way, and then here's our replant rows running off on an angle. This is accomplishing exactly what we want. We are probably killing a few plants where we cross with the planter, but we are also leaving all of the plants in the middle. If and when these additional beans emerge, we should have about a perfect quantity of soybeans out here in this field. The size of these little plants misrepresent the damage out here in the field. I don't believe they're really as bad as they look, but because they are so small, there's not much surface area out here covered with plants. In a few weeks, as they keep growing, put on trifoliates, it'll look completely different out here. Plus the original beans were no-tilled this spring. No-till beans do not look good for about a month. things I noticed while catching all that footage of the planter in action. We will start with the best and go to the worst, which they're all problems, so we'll start with the best problem and then go to the worst problem. The first thing I want to highlight, and I've noticed this all year, our seed bed where we ran that vertical till is very rough. I think we need to reevaluate the metrics and dimensions we have our tillage tool set to. It's just too rough for a seed bed. We also don't have hydraulic downforce, which doesn't help at all. Those row units do not need to be bouncing that much. And I don't need to be bouncing that much in the tractor. I'm gonna have CTE from all this brain shaking. Our very professional fan hose patch has come undone. Fortunately, I do have our magical green tape. So I'll fix that real quick. It's not as big of an issue as it seems because even with that hole in the line, it still has no problems getting adequate seed to the units. I don't like looking at it though. I'm actually pretty kind. I fold over the tape, that way it doesn't stick all the way down so our employees who don't have fingernails can get the tape on stuff. And by employees that don't have fingernails, I mean me. So I did that for myself. So I'm actually kind of selfish. Last on the list is a minor hydraulic leak on the back of the planter. They're pretty easy to spot, especially when the planter's this dusty. Got all sorts of oil, a little bit on the back step. It's got to be coming from that control box there on the inside. Probably a bad seal if I had to get there is a decent amount leaking out. Not quite enough to stop the planter, but certainly enough to be concerned. We'll consider that a high priority inconvenience. I can't exactly pinpoint where it's coming from. Like I said, probably one of these seals in here is leaking out. I don't think they're hard to replace, but it is a pain in the rear end. Oil's probably coming out at maybe a gallon per hour. That's not cheap to replace, but I would like to get these beans replanted. And besides, if we give it 30 minutes, an hour, maybe even a couple more rounds, it might get up to 10 or 20 gallons per hour. Maybe even 10 gallons per minute. We'll just fix it when it completely goes out of whack. The diagnostic system on the tractor will definitely let me know if I run out of oil. That is, if I don't miss a massive geyser of oil coming out the back. We don't quite have one yet. I feel like that's just due though. This replanting has been too smooth so far. We need some kind of major mishap. Other than me hitting all of the inlets. That's not really a mishap, that's just a way of life. Just finished up the big section of the field. 
We have about maybe two acres here on the east side of this creek to do. Got to do a little frolic through the meadow to get there. It just dawned on me that this is the first time we've ever had to replant beans for hail damage before we've had to replant any for water damage. I probably should just shut up now because I don't want to jinx us, but I do have a big mouth. We haven't had to replant anything because of major water damage yet. Last year we hadn't even finished planting our last farm yet, and we've already replanted a farm this year prior to that date. I think we put those Don Mario beans in the ground on like the 14th or the 15th of May. We were done planting all of our fields before the end of April this year, which is just absolutely wild. In 2019, which was extremely wet, I didn't even start planting beans till like the second week of May. I was planting these farms on my birthday, which is on the 16th, and I believe on that same day, I buried the planter tractor. What a birthday present. Crossing the land bridge. Some people call those Kentucky bridges. Some people call those Missouri bridges. I just call it the way I get to the other side of the farm. We are roughly 100 yards, give or take, from the last place I checked in and showed you the beans. And I actually think the hail damage was worse on this east section of the farm. Take a look at the damage here. This must have been brutal. Cut off, cut off, cut off. Cut off, cut off. Cut off, cut off, cut off. And the rest are shredded. Not pretty. But that's why we have the planter here. There's only one pass left. The next 100 acres we have to replant or enlist beans. These are extend flex. So like we've been doing all season, gotta make sure the row units are empty. I've deactivated the hydraulics so the seed fan is not running. Looking for some zeros up here. It almost appears to have gotten bigger since last time I was here. Maybe need a tractor. Almost done. We'll shoot. That looks pretty important. And I almost guarantee that's off of my planter. You only had about 10 more minutes so you could clock out. Lazy kids. Where did that come from? Oh, there's the culprit right there. I'd be willing to bet that that wash had something to do with it. You're coming with me. A little bit heavier than a rock. Since we're replanting the whole farm, that's good enough clean out for me. Time to take over the next field and shut it off because we won't have any beans till tomorrow. You can't even really tell that there was beans out there to start with. Probably did a lot of damage in the process of healing. Not the first time I've had to do that. This looks like a good place to park for the night. Not the greatest passenger in the world. Wouldn't stay out of the way of the clutch. A little notch worn in here from years of bumping against that seed depth setting. Made in China. Must be junk. We've got the real brains here diagnosing the problems. Does anyone know what that hand signal meant? Oh, fold. It's kind of a guessing game, figuring out what does what. That junction box has so many different hydraulic lines running out of it, it's hard to tell what's actually causing the problem. Wouldn't be our work if we didn't make a mess. Ooh. We planned our seed pretty good. Only have about three full bags left over. And we didn't even have to use our extras. We're pretty good at this. Why is it still leaking? This planter's seen a lot of oil this year. Time to gather our belongings and lock it up for the night. Come back tomorrow and replant a couple more fields of beans. Good as new. It's tight against that, but it'll be all right. Yeah, I think that leak is coming out of the junction box there on the middle. That on that second, one. Second big one. Second on the right, the big one. Second one on the left. No, on the right. Time to head back in home. Hopefully the planter's here tomorrow, untouched. Unless someone wants to show up in the middle of the night, hop in the planter, bring your own beans, and plant this farm for me, I wouldn't complain. Other than those corn rows being crooked and zigzagged and snaked throughout the field from that high-speed planter not being able to stay straight, corn crop looks beautiful this evening. It doesn't hurt that it's golden hour either. It appears that the boss got our tile mess cleaned up, or at least temporarily. You can see in the sunlight all the beans we have to replant, pretty much that section through there maybe a tenth of an acre. The rest of them look pretty healthy. No hail damage over here. Can't really complain. Smells like someone sprayed some herbicide. I bet it was the neighbor. Killing off the weeds on his corn stalks. How else would you get them to dry? You know, it never really gets old. I've been riding up and down these roads here behind the farm for as long as I can remember. And it's never lost that special touch. There's something really special about farming. A lot of memories, a lot of pride. Which is why it's so painful to see all the spots out in the cornfields 
that my dad messed up with planning. Not very many, but you do see them. I will say that it is rather nice to drive around and be able to leisurely watch everyone scramble to finish up planning or get started for some operations. Not that that really means anything. It doesn't make us any better as farmers, and it doesn't mean that their crops are going to yield any less. It's kind of like being inside on a windy day and watching everyone else struggle to collect their things. As with anything in this life, you never know how the cards are going to fall on the table. Who knows, all these people putting in a lot of acres today, they may end up with more fortunate weather in the tail end of the growing season and be better off than us. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. I appreciate you all tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And as always, comment down below if you have any questions. I will get back to them eventually. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Peace!